Hey Trackies, welcome back to another video here on TXD Track Time. As you can see, this is what I have to be doing, jumping from location to location. I'm at a different location. I'm at the Red Fridge. <laughs> I'll tell you a bit more about the, the Red Fridge later on, but it's an Airbnb owned by my sister. But yeah, so I'm jumping from location to location. I was here earlier this morning, actually. The Wi-Fi wasn't working and I had to head into the town and here I am back here and finally the Wi-Fi is working. So here we are, right? So I want to touch on the 200 meters and boy, oh boy, this 200 meters is weighing heavily, heavily on my heart. Let's start with the men and the 200 meters. So we had Andrew Hudson line up in the 200 meters there. I'm very competent run by him. He finished second to Andre de Grasse. Andre de Grasse ran a 19.98 seconds, right, to win. And then Andrew Hudson ran a 20.374 second and Kendall Williams a 20.524 um, third. Now, in this race, I thought, you know, uh, Andrew Hudson had a good enough bend, but considering that I know that Andre DeGrasse isn't the strongest bend runner, he pretty much comes on in the last 80, you would say, in the race, is where you really see the strong point of Andre DeGrasse. I thought it was, you know, not the best for Andrew, Andrew Hudson to be losing to an Andre DeGrasse coming off the bend. But then again, Andre DeGrasse is the defending Olympic champion. So, I mean, he's an awesome sprinter in his own right. So, with that being said, I, I would say I would have love to see a, a stronger performance from Andrew Hudson but still a second place will take it 20.37 seconds to Andre de Grasse is um 19.98 I thought for um Andrew Hudson in the final 50 he really lost momentum in that final 50 and you know Andre de Grasse pretty much went away or maintained his speed for longer than Andrew Hudson did you know causing him to dip below 20 seconds in the race so that is what happened in the men's 200 meters. Overall, you know, good. I was looking for something a little bit. I'm not going to lie, but it is what it is. I'll take it, right? Um, let's jump on over to the women's 200 meters. Now, for me, as you all know, I thought this would be the clash of the meet um, based on, you know, the athletes that were lining up. I thought we would definitely get great competition here. And I believed it, the race was definitely living up to expectations, you know, in the early phases of what we were seeing. I was like, okay, this race is doing what I thought it would do. But unfortunately, track is... Um, I don't know how to even explain this because at this point, I don't even want to say it's catastrophic. I'm just, you know, praying it's not, but, um, it seems as though our worst fears, um, you know, were realized. I did notice before the race, I was like, Sherika Jackson is still wearing that strap, right? What does this mean? I know she said in Kingston that it means nothing. There's nothing wrong with her. You know, she just has it on as, a, I guess, a precautionary measure. But I still noticed it here. So I, my first thought in the race was, what are what are you guys trying to do? Are you guys trying to throw us off, make us think you're injured? And by us, I mean the world, right? And then you turn up in, in Paris and, you know, what am them? Or what am them? <laughs> is that the thought process, right? Um, so I'm looking at it and I'm like, there's one or two things. Either something is really wrong or something is not wrong and it's just all mind games right and then yeah the race is progressing and i'm like okay great right so um sherika gets a great bend i would say she comes off the turn in the lead and she's doing exactly what i'm expecting sherika jackson to do against a uh, julian alfred julian alfred was right up on her though on the outside but considering that julian alfred has already gone 10.78 and sherika was still leading her you know coming out of um the turn which indicates to me that sherika was in good nick i said you know from the trials i believe she could have given us a low 22 slash high 21 in this race it was giving me the same vibe and i said we would be getting a similar performance of what i was would, would have been expecting in kingston it's just that she cruised in kingston so she didn't give it to us versus here i definitely saw her putting in the effort to get that run in right or that better performance in so she came off the, the curve leading julian alfred as i said was a step behind a step or two behind her still doing her thing but then about 50 50 meters away from the finish line sherika jackson just you know gasps right or what did i say 30 minutes 30 meters maybe 30 meters away from the finish line she just gasped in apparent pain and stops right and that's how sherika jackson's race ended you know with her place in eighth track is now of course this is a huge huge concern for us jamaicans right seeing her this close to paris pull up in visible pain what i would say is the only thing that i can take and as a positive out of it is that she didn't look like she was in excruciating pain like she couldn't move couldn't walk no nothing she was still walking she, she was still fine but i I did see snippets of her face 
you know, because I'm watching the whole thing. I want to see her body language and all. And she looked very worried on her face. So that's making me concerned as well. I'm sure, you know, being so close to the Olympic Games and her wanting to do great things there, this happening to her now is, you know, not a good look. But as I said, it didn't look that serious. So even though the scream looked serious, the aftermath, her face, even though she looked concerned, it still, the injury didn't look that bad. It looked as though she may have had... I don't want to say a, a strain because strain is bad. Maybe a cramp. Maybe she felt a cramp um, in the race. Maybe that's what happened. And I also noticed as well when they slow mode, uh, slow motioned, you know, what was going on with her. I noticed very importantly that it wasn't the foot that was trapped that she hopped upon. She hopped upon the other leg. So if I'm not mistaken, the left leg is trapped and then she hopped upon the right leg. Right. So it seems as though something happened to the right leg. But then I was watching her walk off and how she was walking. The left leg seems kind, seemed kind of stiff. Right. And I remember during the commentary as well, the commentator was what they were saying that we haven't been seeing, you know, the, the typical leg lifts from her or knee drives from her. And I have to agree. I've been talking about this. We haven't been seeing her lifting her legs, you know, as what she was typical of doing, you know, in previous years so far this season. Right. And it was obviously in this race even though she was you know doing so well before the pull-up you also didn't get that you know i'm dry that the kind of high knee lift situation we weren't getting it from sharika during the race so i'm not really sure what went wrong the it looks bad but it also doesn't look bad where this close to paris track is we just have to pray and remain positive that um you know sharika jackson will come out on you know better than what happened in this particular um, race. Hopefully, as I said, it's just a cramp and nothing too serious. She walked off just fine. At least it's not like, you know, some athletes that had to be lifted off, you know what I mean? No, that would be crazy. But um, I'm remaining hopeful right now. So eventually, as I said, because Sherika Jackson stopped, it would have been her race. It was, I, I call it for being Sherika's race, but it is what it is. Um, Julian Alfred took the win. She ran at 22.16 seconds. Daryl Nita um, finishes um, in Second, she ran a 22.36. These are all season's best from these athletes. Lane was third. She ran a 22.54. I had Lane, I think, third. Darren is a fourth. It is what it is, guys. Race it, races, it'll always get it spot on. I think this is pretty pretty close. Um, as, as I did indicate as well that I didn't have the full lineup in the first day, so I didn't know the other athletes. Natasha was fourth, rallying back from her 11.19 in the 100, coming back in the 200 and running at 22.95. So good performances from her in both rounds, I'm thinking. And of course, as I said, Sherika Jackson finished eighth, and she ran a 36.29. I, I, when I was writing down this 36.29, I was like, oh my God, I shudder to even you know say this out of my mouth that Sherika Jackson finished with a 36.29. But it is what it is. Um, that's the time that the clock registered considering the fact that again she stopped um track is now it's your turn to tell me your thoughts in the comment section below based on the snippets that you saw of sharika jackson during the race how concerned are you leading into this crucial 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 um paris olympic games like the video of course and subscribe to the channel i'll catch you all in the next one bye